want me to be your whore. I want us to continue as we began with you as my sworn protector, my white knight. I took an oath. As a, as a knight of, of your king's guard, an oath of chastity. I've broken it. I I, I've, I've soiled my, my, my white cloak. It is the only thing I have to my fucking name. It's time to head back to King's Landing. We are on our ship again. We did not get to spend a ton of time on this scene on Talk the Thrones, but mm. I think there's a lot to break down here yeah. in this conversation between Kristen and Rhaenyra. Kristen approaches yeah. her for a chat. Very risky that anybody could hear them. It's established that like they couldn't sleep. It's very early still. I was like, guys, what are you doing? This is this is wild. Plus, I mean, so you know in the doc here that he's not wearing his armor, and you yeah. and you've something else you want to say that about that. But I will say to me, and I don't usually get like too stuffy about this stuff, but it bothers me when people like like this is indecent of him to just like come to her and his like britches on the deck of a ship like <laughs> they didn't do this in the uh in the um the cure nightly pride and prejudice people were forever greeting each other in like nightgowns and i'm like they wouldn't do that they'd be dressed what the hell anyway as a person um, who spends the bulk of my time in my pajamas i was not bothered by this but noted okay. noted uh my, the thing that stood out to me about him not wearing his king's guard armor here is that it's one more example of how the show is really smartly using wardrobe set design mm -hmm. scene choreography to signal mindset and intent he has yeah. to take off the white cloak this reminder of the vow that he is so horrified to have sullied as he yeah. goes to have this conversation and throughout the episode with Kristen, alice and many characters renice and the throne as we talked about these kinds of little, little symbols of, of what people are thinking. I think that's one of the things the show is doing really well. Joe, can you take us through Kristen's proposal? We have a few things to hit here. We have his initial proposal, Rhaenyra's response, Rhaenyra's proposal, and Kristen's response. Let's start with his initial proposal to her. Right. So he says... I mean, speaking of Pride and Prejudice, it's way better than Mr. Darcy's initial proposal. We'll give him that, right? So he says, I'm asking you to come. <laughs> I'm asking you to come away, come with me away from all this, from the burdens and indignities of your inheritance. Let us leave it all behind and see the world together. We will be nameless and free, free to go where we like, to love as we like. In Essos, you could marry me. A marriage for love. Not for the crown. I love that you capitalized the C and crown on this uh, <laughs> document here. I think that's really smart. What, what do you make of the language in that specific proposal, Mallory? So I think it is very telling that he's building toward this proposal by focusing on how Rhaenyra herself has lamented her lack of agency, how she didn't get to make these choices in her life, how she did not specifically choose Lanor. Yeah. Now, on the one hand, I think it's like, it, it's so fascinating that his proposal includes exact language, like not similar, exact language to what we have heard Rhaenyra herself say before. He says here, from the burdens and indignities of your inheritance. Recall the burdens of my inheritance language that we heard from Rhaenyra to Damon in episode four. So he's using exact things that she has said to describe her own circumstances here. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> he's asking her to cast aside her birthright, her life, her family, her name, her crown, everything about herself and her circumstance something that a man would never be asked to do. The gall. The gall! <laughs> I have to wonder, like, what do you, during his adventurous youth, what tale did yeah. the women tell him about his prowess that made him think that one <laughs> roll in the hay with him was worth giving up her birthright? Oh, my God. I have God. questions about that. Incredible. My big question here, well, first of all, this is, they're competing um, accounts right. of this in Fire and Blood, right? This was big confirmation. We've, we've talked before about Mushroom as a source, and Mushroom had a big win last week with his salacious, uh, you know, gossip about Damon and, and Rhaenyra. And here, another source in the book, Septon Eustace, has the upper hand, right? Because Mushroom is the one who says, 
Rhaenyra went to Kristen and begged him. And in the book, it's Eustace is the one who says, you know, Sir Kristen Cole slipped into the princess's bedchamber to confess his love for her. He told Rhaenyra that he had a ship waiting on the bay and begged her to flee with him across the narrow sea. They would be wed in Tyrosh or Old Volantis, where her father's writ did not run, and no one would care that Sir Criston had betrayed his vows as a member of the King's Guard. His prowess was sword and Morningstar was such that he did not doubt he would find some merchant prince to take <laughs> them into service, but Rhaenyra refused him, right? Yeah. So that's pretty close to what happened here. You it's think when they said his prowess room, with the sword that they're talking about what you were asking about a minute ago? <laughs> But my big question for you, <laughs> my big question for you is that he's couching this initially mm-hmm. as a love proposal. Mm-hmm. Do you, Mallory Rubin, believe that Kristen Cole loves Rhaenyra Targaryen? I think it's hard to answer that in a vacuum here without accounting for what we learned from him later in the conversation about sullying his both because I think that those things are like inextricable from each other does he have some sort of genuine feeling for Rhaenyra maybe I almost think it's irrelevant though because he's so clearly driven by this other impulse as well as we'll break down in a second but what, what do you think do you think that he does love her do you think he doesn't do you think it doesn't matter we're going to talk about this a bit more when in, during his conversation with Allison, I have a lot yeah. to say about like his ideas of chivalry and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And as yeah. they pertain yep. to being, but there's this idea of chivalric love. And if you think about it, when it comes to, if you've not, you know, made your way through various Arthurian legends, both for pleasure or for in my case, my English degree, um, <laughs> then maybe you don't know the, about the idea of chivalric love, but think about Jorah and the way that he loved Daenerys, which is more like, a remote, idealized love. Like, not a real down-to-earth feet in the clay love, but I've put you on this pedestal and I love you. That's sort of what chivalric love is. And sometimes it's not even, like, sexual. It's, like, virtuous, whatever. Obviously, Chris and Cole is a sexual being. But I think he loves the... It's actually a really viral TikTok audio that is from Outer Banks of all places that is about, um, you don't love me, you love the idea of me, right? And so yeah. it's like this idea, I don't think he Post actually yeah. sees Rhaenyra at right. all. And I think it's really important that that mm-hmm. stand in contrast to someone like Harwin Strong, who grins at her as she drags a boar back into camp or grins at her as she runs through the street of King's Landing as dressed as a boy, or even Damon, who sees her very intimately. Like, I think those two men see her. Mm -hmm. And I think Kristen, though he spent all this time with her, he approaches her, he's like, I think I know you. Here are all the things I know about you. Yeah, 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 I think I know you. And I'm like, I don't think you really know her, Kristen. I think you've invented this idea of a princess benefactor and you've envisioned this like Lancelot and Guinevere story for yourself and that's not actually the story that you're in. To hear more from this conversation, follow The Ringerverse on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.